Last time, we left off wondering how the French priest and scientist Marin Mersenne did what Galileo said was impossible, measuring the frequency of a vibrating string. In the early 1600s, the only really viable way to measure how frequently something was moving back and forth was counting. These counts could be compared to the most accurate timekeeping device of the day, the pendulum. Thanks to the work of Galileo, it was known that pendulums swing back and forth at a reasonably constant frequency. So if you wanted to find the frequency of, say, a vibrating string, all you really needed was a pendulum, a vibrating string, and a friend who was good at counting. After setting the string vibrating and the pendulum swinging, you could simply have your friend count string vibrations while you count pendulum swings. If you used a roughly one meter long pendulum, as Mersenne did, the time required for one swing is close to one second. So if in the time it takes you to count eight pendulum swings, your friend counts 16 string vibrations, then each pendulum swing corresponds to two string vibrations. So your string frequency is double that of your pendulum, two vibrations per second. In theory, this is a great way to measure the frequency of a vibrating string. But we still haven't cracked Galileo's central problem here. The vibrating string moves back and forth way too quickly for us to see. So how did Mersenne solve this problem? He built a scale model. Thanks to Galileo's educated guesses, Mersenne believed that the longer he made his vibrating strings, the lower their frequency of vibration would be. So Mersenne set out creating longer and longer vibrating strings until the vibration became so slow he was simply able to count. Mersenne's measurements were far from perfect, and he ended up with some ridiculously long strings, over 100 feet in some cases, but his method worked. He was able to measure the frequency of a vibrating string and provide experimentally validated answers to our questions from earlier. Let's see if we can recreate Mersenne's approach. Now, instead of setting up really long strings, we'll use a tool Mersenne could only have dreamed of, a high-speed camera. Using our camera, we can slow down the motion of our strings, just as Mersenne did by making his strings so long, allowing us to simply count the number of vibrations in a given time period. Now that we have a good experimental setup, we can do some real science. Let's try to answer one part of the first question that Galileo correctly guessed the answer to. What is the connection between the length and frequency of a vibrating string? Now, Galileo's approach of guessing an answer first may not seem very scientific. Let's see what the Nobel Prize winning physicist Richard Feynman has to say about this. Now I'm going to discuss how we would look for a new law. In general, we look for a new law by the following process. First, we guess it. <laughs> then we com... So don't laugh, that's what really true. Then we compute the consequences of the guess to see what, if this is right, if this law that we guessed is right, we see what it would imply, and then we compare those computation results to nature, or we say compare to experiment or experience, compare it directly with observation to see if it, if it works. So maybe Galileo's guessing first approach isn't such a bad idea. Let's start where Galileo did and see if we can make an educated guess about the connection between the length and frequency of our vibrating string. To help us make an educated guess, let's make a few observations first, using our Mersenne-inspired experimental setup. Let's fix our tension and see how our frequency changes with a few different length values. At a length of 40 centimeters, our string completes about 122 full cycles in one second. So our frequency is approximately 122 cycles per second, also known as 122 hertz. Now, if we double the length of our string, it vibrates more slowly, with a frequency of about 65 hertz. Finally, if we half our original length to 20 centimeters, our string vibrates more quickly, with a frequency of around 245 hertz. Now, let's do some science. Given our observations and everything we've learned about vibrating strings, what's your guess? What do you think the connection is between the length and frequency of a vibrating string? As Feynman pointed out, your guess should be specific enough to produce exact predictions. To make things interesting, let's go ahead and set up the experiment we'll use to test our guesses next time. If our guess is any good, it should work for different strings and different tensions. 
Let's change our tension to 3200 grams and take one observation at 40 centimeters. At this length and tension, our string vibrates at a frequency of approximately 174 hertz. Now, after we make our educated guess about the connection between length and frequency, to see if our guess is any good, we'll use it to compute what we expect the frequency to be when we change the length of this string to, let's say, 80 centimeters, 50 centimeters, and 20 centimeters. All right, I'm turning it over to you. What's your guess? What do you think the connection is between the length and frequency of a vibrating string? Using your guess, what are your predictions for the other string lengths in our experimental setup? Can you make the same guess that Galileo did? For a closer look at our data, check out the PDF linked below. Good luck, and thanks for watching.